All right, guys, we got to talk about it. I know you guys are all sick of talking about it. Who am I kidding? You're not. You love talking about it more than anything else in the world. But, uh, yeah, we got to revisit this uh, Denver stuff a little bit here. And, look, I know, uh, look, I, I can see what the people want, right? You guys want to talk more about this Broncos stuff because it's just so beautiful. It's just come together so perfectly for us. So... I, I, I'm still going to try to avoid making my channel, like, like making a Denver video every single day. I, I mean, obviously, there's only going to be so much interesting to say about it. But this upcoming weekend is a very pivotal moment for us. So I want to talk about it for a minute, and then I want to uh, make a little bit of an announcement at the end of this video. I think that's fair, right? Like, th this is a potentially franchise altering moment and if it sounds like I'm exaggerating I don't think I am so the trade deadline's coming up next week and you start to see which teams are going to be involved and what side they might be on like you had the Eagles getting Robert Quinn uh yesterday so obviously the Eagles are buyers and the Bears are sellers now Quinn wasn't really fitting in with that Chicago defense anyway but Either way, that is a move that identifies one team as being kind of buying and another team as kind of selling. The Broncos are showing up in trade rumors right now and they are not buying. They are not taking on players. They are not taking on talent now. They are being talked about in trade rumors as a team that might be trying to offload players to get some picks. Obviously, nothing has happened yet. But we know of a handful of things going on in the rumor mill concerning the Denver Broncos. You've got a lot of stuff around Jerry Judy. Is Jerry Judy going to get moved? He's the Broncos' number two receiver. He's a starter. He's somebody that they had a lot of stock in. Moving him sets your receiver core back significantly as much as he's been a bit of a disappointment this year. You've also got K.J. Hamler talks. People are calling the Broncos about K.J. Hamler. He's a guy who was a second round pick. He was hyped. He was supposed to be a part of this offense when Tim Patrick went down. I think he's got five catches in seven games or something like that. Six games. I, I can't, maybe he missed one, but he's not really doing much either. So get assets for him now because next year is his fourth year. Rookie deal going to be almost over. Actually, excuse me, maybe it's his fourth year. Not a hundred percent sure off the top of my head, but the point is you move him to get something for him. So that's, two of their top receivers possibly on the trade block you've also got dalton risner uh, one of their guards he's in the final year of his deal he's a former second round pick like kj hamler was uh, excuse me so that's another player of importance for that broncos team a player who could help them now that they are potentially looking to offload not for another player not for anything like that but for a little bit of cap relief and future draft picks that that's the thing i want to emphasize here this is a key part of that broncos offense and i know it's the worst offense in the league but it's still a key part of that offense and they're thinking about trading him for an asset that will not bear fruit until next year at the earliest and then you've got the big one bradley chubb he's being leaked in trading room trade rumors as well his name is being tossed around in all kinds of trade rumors. This is the guy who might get you a first-round pick. This is the guy who might get you more than a first-round pick. This is kind of the big piece. And as you can see, this report actually spells it out pretty cleanly. Bradley Chubb is likely to be traded if the Broncos lose to the Jaguars. I want to repeat that. Likely to be traded if the Broncos lose to the Jaguars. One of the best players the Broncos have on that defense a starter, their, I guess you would say, primary pass rusher. I know Randy Gregory's a better overall player. Chubb is probably their best pass rusher. And he's very unlikely to be back next year, so they may look at this as a situation where, look, we can give some young guys that we don't know about a little bit more time out there. We can give Bradley Chubb a chance to go play for a winning team this year. We can get an asset for him when we are probably just going to lose him at the end of the year because... 
we're going to have a limited amount of money to work with anyway. Maybe we don't want to make a long-term commitment to a guy who's been inconsistent like Chubb, whatever. And if we can get a first-round pick out of it, then, yeah, we kind of got to go with that. And I, I know he's like a half-year rental. You don't want to give up a first-round pick for that. But I imagine some team is going to talk themselves into it being the only way they can get him in any capacity, and they're planning to extend him long-term. But that's kind of the key part of all of this. Jerry Judy, K.J. Hamler, Dalton Risner, and Bradley Chubb. You will probably see most or all of those guys get traded from the Broncos for future draft picks if, and this is why this weekend is such a pivotal moment for this Seahawks rebuild, if the Denver Broncos roll into London Sunday morning, for us it'll be Sunday morning, and lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars and move to 2-6, and six, everything blows up. So yeah, this otherwise terrible looking game between two, two and five teams, two, maybe not the two teams that you would look at and go, maybe you're not the worst team, but you're not far off. A game that feels like it's going to be like eight to six somehow, or it's going to somehow end four to three. This awful joke of a football game matters. If Denver wins, not only are they three and five, which takes them probably out of the top 10, at least temporarily, and probably empowers them to feel like they could dig themselves out of this hole and probably motivates them to hit the second half of the year with some degree of intensity that has been missing. <clears throat> but if they lose, not only do they move to two and six, and at that point they'll, they'll almost certainly have a top five pick. If, if you go to Tankathon, the five teams in front of them, odds are pretty good one of them is going to win. Um, like uh, New Orleans plays uh, the Raiders in New Orleans. I would expect New Orleans to win that game, so they would get bumped out of the top five and Denver would get bumped in. So losing this game, not only does it move you to two and six, but it also means you're giving up a lot of your better players. The Pretty much anything that isn't nailed down that can be traded that you don't know is part of your future as an organization going forward past 2022 Get it out of here. Like I said, a starting receiver, uh, their number one slot receiver, a starting guard, and their best edge rusher, or at least second best edge rusher, a starting edge rusher. These are some of the most important players to this Denver team, or at least they should have been in the case of KJ Hamler. Like he he didn't get off the launching pad, but he was he he's better than who's ever behind him, presumably, right? or else the guy behind him would be playing. That's the case 90% of the time. So them shedding those players and getting back nothing of immediate value because, of course, draft picks pay off next year is on the line. And I think it happens. I think it really does happen just the way I spelled it out. If they lose, fire sale. Everything must go. Those four guys will be gone in 48 hours. If they win... I think they stand pat. I think they keep their guys. They hope things work out. They figure that, hey, maybe we don't make the playoffs, but if we can salvage like a maybe we can salvage like a six or seven win season, that's not completely crushing. They have no draft pick to get, so it's not like they're tanking. And that makes this game about as important as it could be as a Seahawks fan, because this game could really be the difference between us getting the number one pick in this upcoming draft, and I really think that's in play if they lose this game, or getting, like, the 13th. So with that in mind, a little bit of an announcement, I will be streaming this game on Sunday. I'm going to uh, get up and watch garbage football at 6.30 in the morning on a Sunday, and I figure I may as well hang out with the people who are doing the same thing. So, yeah. Gonna get up at about 6 o'clock, set up the stream, get ready, by 6.30, we'll be live, and we'll be watching bad football super early in the morning. If you are planning on doing it as well, come and hang out. I'll do play-by-play. -play. We'll talk about the game. We'll have some fun. And what I think is going to happen is that I'm going to then turn off the stream and uh, be off stream during the early games. And what I may do is do another stream for the Seahawks-Giants game. 
I talked about streaming that game. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it, but that is on the table. Uh, it's a pretty big game now. I may want to watch it with my family, but it's on the table. I'm not sure, but I will be streaming this game because this could be the difference between Will Anderson and Henry Toho Toho. This could be the difference between CJ Stroud and DJ Ugalele. And I know we're all thinking about the present right now because this team is playing so well. But we got to have eyes on the future as well. Be mindful of the future. So, obviously, as a Seahawks fan, I'll be hoping dearly that the Broncos go down and end up in that fire sale mode. 